Hi yogis, I'm Pippa. I work with Jeff Bailey, the founder of Avita Yoga, as his global support, you could say. I'm here to introduce today's Avita Yoga community chat, recorded live and available now to listen to anytime. The Avita Yoga community chat is a free, informal and welcoming Q&A with Jeff, where students and teachers alike can bring their questions and learn from each other to deepen their understanding of the practice and their own bodies. In today's chat, Jeff explains the Avita series 1 through 5, how they came about and developed, and how best to practice with the progression while still choosing classes you love. Really interesting questions come up about hypermobility and the lymphatic system, and the always popular topic of dealing with muscle cramps during practice. Now on to the chat. Enjoy. Okay. So we have Jenny, Joan, Kendall, and Jane. Lots of J's today. Yeah. And Jeff. <laughs> yeah. And, and Kendall, last time you had those questions about cramping and all that. How's it been going? I haven't noticed them at all since, since I asked the question, which is <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I have yeah, a new I, question I, for today. I don't get a sense that you're, you're, I don't get the sense that you're complaining about that at all. No, no actually I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't you lead it off? Lead us off, Kendall. What's your question for today? Okay. So um, generally, I can get in three practice yoga sessions a week, which I quite enjoy. Um, I, I'm really enjoying the special ones that you've had on shoulders and low back and hips. And so workshops. Yeah. So I've actually switched and most of my yoga practice has been around doing those particular uh, practices. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you about finding the balance between the series that I've been working on and the special ones. Yeah. It's a really good question. People are always drawn to the particular classes for a hip or a shoulder or their toes or their hand or whatever. And I like to think of those special workshops as, as homework. It's something that we do a little bit of those in addition to the regular practice because the progression of each series and the progression that I, I'm continually teaching is systematically going through the body, yeah, hip to tail. And if we start to target a particular part of the body that we feel is uh, troublesome to us, then we tend to leave other parts out. And it's yeah. and because it is all connected, as we know, it's really important. I feel to keep working through the whole body systemically. And not only do we keep touching on the different parts of the body as we move through it. But we move, but we touch on the parts of the body in different ways as we go through. Like today, I did a hip progression, a hip uh, sequence was a progression from certainly the last two. I mean, that's always how I'm thinking. Same idea, but a completely different approach. It keeps us out of a ritual. Like, you know, we can have a routine mm -hmm. of, of coming back to practice on a regular, consistent basis. But if we become ritualistic, then we start to sink into patterning and the mind starts to go to sleep again. And, you know, we just, we kind of fall into that really predictable routine. So long answer to your question, I would, or summing it up, I would say, yeah, do those classes for homework, but keep coming back to the series. Okay. Really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. And don't over practice. You know, it's easy if you're doing three classes a week in the series, and then you add on top of that your homework, it might be too much. Okay. You know, so you'll, you'll figure out, you listen to your body and you just keep pacing your way through it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. I had a, I had a similar question. So that was a great one. Thanks for answering. Cause I, okay. I finished Jeff the, the series for our training. And I thought, oh, gosh, what do I do now? So I just went back to where I left off 
to 1.4. Oh, you know, and so I'll just go uh -huh. through that and then go through two and three. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. All right. Let okay. me speak a little bit to the different series. What I'm talking about is, is staying consistent in a series. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And the way those have evolved, I mean, I had no idea how this was all going to play out when I started, you know, five or six years ago. But the way these different series, now five of them have come together, is like a chapter of my teaching career. The first ones, series one, came about specifically when I was teaching only in the classroom, and it was quite a while before COVID, and I just thought, okay, I've got to create a series to get online for people to practice, because people were saying, how can I practice when I'm not in Boulder, or when I'm not at your studio, and I'm traveling, or whatever, and so then that just led to putting it online. Well, COVID hit, and then everything went online, so series two came with COVID, and so it has a particular energy, you know, I went from having a lot of people in the room to having very, very, very few people in the room and adjusting to the technology and everything. And then series three came along and series three has a, a really nice energy. I like series three. If you like the classroom setting, series three is really nice because the masks come off and we lighten up, we liven up and people start coming back into the room. Uh, series three, I like a lot. And then four was just after I sold the studio. And so I, I went through this other kind of adjustment period where I would teach one on one, sometimes two people, usually my wife. And, and that went on for about a year. And then it, it dawned on me, I had never taught and practiced at the same time in my life. And so now here I am in series five, teaching and practicing at the same time. I think it's one of the most effective ones and people tend to be saying it's their favorite. So mm. you don't have to go through one, two, three, four, and five and series five in particular, I think is lovely because it's targeted exactly to teaching online. So you could start with the first class in series five and, and I don't, I have no idea what's coming next. I mean, but, but so far that's super fulfilling for me and it's a nice way to teach. I don't have to, continually pull Lori out of her, you know, her day or whatever she's doing to be my student. That's great. Thank you very much for explaining that. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so let me say just a tiny bit more. So that's the, the, the series, three green classes and an orange, three greens and an orange. And, and then in series five, two, I began to experiment with different times. The online community started saying, Hey, I, I don't feel like I need an hour long hour class, long class four times a week. So then came the 45 minute and then came the 30 minute class and all that started to, to come in. So now it's in series five, I find it very potent and very effective. And it's a combination of one orange class. That's one hour and then an hour long green, a 45 minute green and a 30 minute green. I think it works really nicely. So you'll find that in there too. Thank you. Yeah. Jeff, I love, I love the 30, the 45 and the hour. It's awesome. It's, it's sweet, awesome. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You without a class, just doing it yourself. It is my absolute favorite. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's nice to just shake it up like that. And then Whenever I, when a, a student will email into me like Jane has and like you have Alexa and like Mathis and like Mathis has, and I love that I can just, uh, the, the 30 minute class is the perfect amount of time to just say, Hey, here's a question that came in and I'm going to answer it as we go along. And, um, I think it just adds a lot to the, to the class and the understanding of it, of the whole practice. So that works out nice. Maybe it's going to end up like by year because I can totally see how, you know, and for everybody, your teaching changes, styles, th thoughts of things, arranging them in a certain capacity. Maybe it's like at the end of 2023, that becomes, you know, maybe you just name them something else. Like it goes by year. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Who knows how many series we're going to have. But if you have ideas, Alexis, I'll be all ears when the time rolls around. <laughs> I don't mean to take myself off camera, but I need to get ready for a huge ladies group that somehow I agreed and not 
I don't know, but I'm teaching them all Evita, so I'm gonna have to get all right. Ready. Yeah, right. out of all, so Joan is a teacher and Alexa is a teacher, and uh, Alexa lives in Maine and Joan is in in uh, Annapolis, where I'm headed tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yay. Yeah, flying into Annapolis for we're wrapping up the Evita teacher training for this year and holding a workshop for your growing Avita student population. So that's, yeah, that's exciting. We're almost full, which is great. Almost only a couple spots a great left. Turnout. Yeah. We're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so sad that I can't be there. I mean, like, like hor- well, you any- started it. So just, so know. All, it all <laughs> happened because Alexa, well, all right, let's tell well, the story Joan real quick. Started. In all truth, Joan started it. She showed up to a, a Vita retreat I was holding in Costa Rica. Um, just out of the blue, didn't know what it was, just signed up for the retreat and then fell in love with it, right? We could say that, Joan. Oh, and yeah. Came back, told Alexa. Alexa did the teacher training. And then Alexa went back. Joan said, now you have to do the teacher training. So here we are. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's going really well in Maine. Oh, good. It's you know, really well. The, you know, it's... Um, online things now we're what a year or two whatever post COVID, and Mm -hmm. everybody wants to be in person again and i have this small studio here in in minnesota but i'm it seems to be for me the consistent classroom teaching is a door that has closed for me for a little while i'm so enjoying the freedom of teaching online and and then it frees me up also to go to these places. I'm holding a workshop in Minneapolis in late September, and then I'll be back in Boulder for some workshops too. So, well, they'll That's be how the ball's bouncing. Be excited to have you okay. here. We'll let you go. Go teach that class. Have fun. But can I ask you one question? Yeah. Um, first, I'm going to tell you something really funny. And Joan, I didn't even call you about this because I think you will find this. It's. I promise you, it's funny because they laughed. I had, I'm sure it's funny, Alexa. I'm already I had laughing. A pet, this is so I'm already funny. laughing. This is so funny, not funny. So I have this class, and you know, usually everybody's really quiet, and you know, we know how to quiet people. But they just every once in a while, you have some people that are just really funny, and they have some fun. Well, I have the yeah. funny class, and we couldn't fit one more person in the room. I can only fit fourteen people, so that's it. They're yeah. packed in there. It's and, getting giddy. Um, I can tell. Yeah. So this one woman. People, a lot of people here because they're they have visitors, so it's really nice. They'll say, "Can I bring in my friend?" So her friend, but it gets a little tricky with health screens. So her yeah. friend, you know, they said everybody's fine, health wise, fine, and they're in Sukhasana. And you know, with certain shapes, you start to shake, and we love the shape. Yeah. We embrace the yeah. shape. So yeah. one, her one leg was shaking, which in my mind made sense what we were doing, and I I think I might have even said like. Like, it's great. Hold your leg there, whatever. Embrace the shake. Well, they start laughing uncontrollably. And I'm like, whatever. Everybody calms down, whatever. The next day I see them. I'm eating breakfast. I'm sitting at the counter yesterday, <laughs> eating, eating at the counter. And they come in yeah. and they're like, we loved class yesterday. It was so amazing. But we really, we got to tell you why we were laughing so hard. And I'm like, I'm like, what's up? They're like, don't feel bad, but actually my friend has Parkinson's and it only affects her left leg. And that was the leg that was shaking and it happened in oh. the middle of class. And I was like, oh, I am mortified. They're like, no, no, yeah. but it was, so anyway, it was one of those funny, not funny, but it was actually really <laughs> good because the class is really good, you know, for what she's oh, going it's a, And it's a incredibly good for Parkinson's. Yeah. It's not going to cure it, but man, does it help with symptoms. Yeah, yeah. So now she's going home and I'm giving her your Avita online stuff so she can work through your online thing. So isn't it? It's so funny. We're all just so connected. Um, yeah. That's so cool. My yeah. other question, Lovely. my question, which is a big one, but we can keep it small for, for today, is we've all been talking about Ehlers Danlos and working with people like that. And I know mm-hmm. you worked with Amy's daughter. Mm-hmm. And I have a student that's been coming uh, like two or three times a week who major dislocation of shoulders surgery mm-hmm. has, has helped it, but she's a rower in college. No more. Can't row anymore. It's happened. Mm-hmm. It's, it, her shoulder's really bad. So I'm working with her and I'm working with her private tomorrow. Um, and I wondered without taking up too much time, if you had any, anything you could hints, tips or tricks especially going into something what's the word joan you said it perfectly 
like going into a pattern that you're usually are trying to stay away from. Let's say. Oh. Um, well, because Jeff had said uh, we want to go into those joints, even if they're hyper. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but during our Avita practice, we can safely go into those those shapes with with these folks, but not when you're standing at the grocery store. So it's in a it's it's in a gentle mindful way of coming into those shapes because we don't mm -hmm. want to not let them come into that mobility because it's the same philosophy. They're going to lose it or something else is going to get tight or compensate. Is that correct? Yeah. We, we keep the practice on the mat, generally speaking, and not, mm -hmm. we don't want to just do these, do it everywhere we go because then it doesn't become a practice. It becomes a habit. And let's get clear. There are people with that come into their, into the world with a lot of mobility and inherent flexibility and mobility. But if we, if we treat that as a problem and avoid it, then that which does not get used gets lost, right? Those ligaments and those tissues need to be exposed to their potential. And in this case, we're certainly not trying to create more mobility, are we? Mm -mm. We're just trying to condition the joint and use those tissues and use the physiology in there. Those of you who have watched the physiology talk, you can understand and see exactly why that is. How much of that does it take on a consistent basis? Not very much. It just needs to happen you know, occasionally to keep it healthy and consistent. We're certainly not gonna go for mobility in that case, but for the person who has a lot of stiffness, then okay, we're working, working into the stiffness, regain over a long period of time, the full extension or the full potential. If we never get it, it's okay. We just, we, we get what we have and we maintain it. With EDS, it's extreme. And yet the principles apply, yes, but you gotta be super careful. Mm -hmm. You gotta be really careful. And, uh, and so mostly with EDS people, you're doing the work, you're doing the active work. And that's the work that they tend to, resist the most because they're so flexible. They just flop into shapes. These are the people who love yin yoga because they can just hang out in the shapes and it feels so good because they can actually feel their body. These people have a harder time feeling their body and they, they kind of get a craving to feel it, which is the catch 22. I don't, you know, you've heard me say, don't chase sensation because chasing sensation comes with risk. So the safest yoga, and I think the most effective you can do with the EDS folks is, is the active work, okay. you know, for example, making a fist or spreading the fingers and opening them wide, all the strap work, you know, reaching overhead, all the strap work on the foot. Um, but you have to, you have to discern, you have to be there to coach them into the full extension help them maintain it, look them in the eye, make sure it's feeling safe, and then and, and watch any tendency that they might have to push, mm -hmm. you know, especially the athletic ones. Yeah, she is athletic, but she's, uh, she's a little overweight. She, mm -hmm. things like legs up the wall, like severe mm -hmm. numbness in her legs. And she's got a lot of- um, Happens fast. Yeah, pretty fast. Yeah. And she gets uh, blood pressure issues as well. Like suppose it's going to be a good thing. Remember, it's an endurance, endurance. non-activity. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the circulation, all that will adjust. And with practice, consistent practice, it will take longer and longer and longer for her legs to go numb. Yeah. So, and that just means the circulation is getting healthier, that everything inside there is getting stronger. And, they, and we don't have to do much, you know, and right. she, but she can do the toe work. She can probably almost make a fist with her foot, right? Have you yeah. seen I mean, she's yeah. just got so much mobility. Now with the shoulder, especially if she's had anybody who's had a, a dislocation and, and whether they've had the surgery or not, mm -hmm. the under the bolster is exact movement that will dislocate it. <laughs> okay. This is so, it pushes the head of the humerus forward. And it's the vulnerable shape, especially if their head is on the end of the bolster and then they go back. I mean, that's probably contraindicated for someone okay. that's had a dislocation. So where you would start is here and doing all the overhead strap work because then it's safe. And with the EDS person, she can probably go all the way to the floor mm -hmm. pretty fast. 
So you're going to slow her down and you're just going to you just slow her down and keep an eye on her. And Hands probably with her, on the bolster. Okay. Probably. Yeah. She seems, yeah, okay. you know, but not uh, vertical, but not vertical. Right. It, or probably not. Yeah. 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 And, and before with people shape. like that, you just say, just ask them before they even do it. Can you put your hands behind your head? Can you interlock your fingers behind your head? And if, and if they're like, I don't know, I've never done that. Well then, okay, let's go super slow. But yeah. they might say, oh yeah. And they just do it. Okay. <laughs> you know, you yeah. just don't want to make any assumptions in those situations. Well, it's good. She came to, she's been to three or four classes and now she's going to come in private and she comes in with her moms and they're all there every class. So it's, it's a good like family affair to work on this. So that's, that's a huge it's help. Such good yoga for her and the standing shapes, the standing shapes are good. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I love all of you and I'm going <laughs> to go. All right. Those were good questions. Go yeah. have fun. Okay. Thanks. Bye guys. All right. Yeah. Bye Lex. Okay. Jenny, let's catch up with you. Oh, okay. So just, I had, um, I ended up having the surgery, Jeff, the microdisectomy okay. um, mid-May. Yeah. Went really well. Um, in almost immediate relief of, of the uh, nerve pain. Mm -hmm. um, what I've started to run into early since early June is um, swelling in my legs, in my calves, thighs, around the knees. Um, and uh, I, I'm walking every morning. So, um, and it just progresses as the day goes on. Is That's that new? new? Yes, it is new. Since the surgery? Yep. Yep. So um, it's something that I'm trying to mm. um, get, to, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, but I've been, so I've been using your practice to a certain degree with legs up the wall, um, activating the muscles in the leg, um, mm -hmm. things like that to try to help the lymph system. Cause I think it's, it's the PT and the acupuncturist both think it's something to do with my lymph, lymph system, um, yeah. kind of re rebooting after the surgery. Okay. But I have to just one quick caveat. I have to, under surgeon's orders, I still can't have, there's no bending until the three month mark, which will be mid August. No, so no forward curving. Correct. So okay. I, you know, I've, I've also been a little bit tentative with what I've done in your practice. And so we'd mm -hmm. love your input. Oh, you have to. Yeah. Because we do a lot of forward curving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But legs up on the wall, your spine is straight. So that's, you can do almost anything supine. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Okay. So, and then just to, just for everybody else's clarification, you, you've been a pretty long time student of Avita yoga. I don't know. Relatively. I don't know. <laughs> like a year um, or so. Yeah, you've been maybe in the practice? coming up on a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, at some point along the way, you had sciatic pain. Did you come in because of sciatic pain? I don't remember. Uh, no, I came in because I wanted to um, figure out how to uh, work on spinal health in a way mm -hmm. that was supportive to the system rather than pushing through different poses that in yoga that really never seemed to help me. And then at some point, the sciatic, the sciatic pain was just became super consistent and chronic and irritating, right? Right. And we had a couple private sessions. We worked on that. You'd seen a physical therapist. You've done just everything under the sun to try to alleviate that. And you'd had an MRI and they very clearly could see where the issue was. Mm -hmm. And so we, you've given everything a really good shot. And I will say, and I think I told you this, Jenny, that's that laminectomy is one of the more successful surgeries that I've ever seen. It's a consistently successful thing and it's fairly non-invasive, right? So I guess bringing up to speed now, so the question has to do with legs up the wall and the swelling? The question has to do with um, the best way to kind of reboot the lymphatic system following yeah, the surgery. I, yeah, I guess. And one thing I would do is go back to the surgeon, go back to the doctors and see if, did you do that? Did they say anything about it? 
they've punted me to the uh, my PCP. Okay, so they're sometimes. I mean, it'd be interesting to know if they've ever seen if there's any kind of consistency with that, like a certain percentage of people who get that. But um, okay, rebooting the lymphatic system. Gosh, Jenny, I just think that all of the things that we do, there's so much that we do with the legs up the wall, the strap work on the foot, on the ball of the foot, the arch of the foot, the heel. So with and without the strap, then you can do the work with your arms and your hands while your legs are up on the wall. You know, all of that is mm -hmm. facilitating the lymph movement. And then even with the legs up the wall and, and bringing the knee into the chest, nature put the lymph glands around the joints because the lymph is a passive system. It doesn't have its own pump like the circulatory system does. So it, the lymph re relies on movement of the body. So when we have the legs up the wall, for example, and we bend the knee and we bring it in, we're putting compression and, and getting the movement that those lymph glands and vessels love in the knee and the groin. And then we got them around the armpit. We have them around the base of the neck. And so I guess th th all I could say, Jenny, is, is maybe limit yourself to the 30 and 45 minute classes. And, you know, the, the majority of the work we do is on the wall and just keep playing with that. Okay. That's very maybe helpful. Maybe we can recharge it up. Yep, that's very helpful. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. Mathis and hey. Jane, either of you have a comment or question? Uh, my question was about um, cramping. So maybe you answered it last week but or last time, but um, when you say to be with it, I totally, that's a new concept for me to, I mean, immediately to back out of a cramp is just what I've always done. So just curious more about mm -hmm. the reasoning behind hanging with it and it really yeah. does go away. It's such a hard thing to do. Yeah, it's very challenging. What part of your body cramps and what shape? Um, if, if you're doing legs up the wall, curling the toes, um, yeah. so my calf, calf, and then sometimes something in the feet. Yeah. So this just came to me. Here's a, I've answered it so many different ways, but here's one way I've never answered it. So how routine is this movement? This is a plate of food and this is my hand like a soup and I'm taking soup from the bowl to my mouth or drinking a glass of water. How often do these muscles, how often does the bicep muscle cramp? Never. Because we, we brush our teeth like this, we comb our hair like yeah. this, we get dressed, you know, so that we could say the bicep muscle and the elbow and the wrist and this part of our body get a pretty full range of motion most of the time. But how often do the, do the muscles in the feet and the toes get to have their full potential of movement? Not often. Especially considering that we wear, you know, we all wear shoes so much. And I'm not advocating going barefoot. It comes back to that idea of just using the, the muscles fully. <laughs> we're not necessarily trying to strengthen the feet or strengthen the toes, but we're just using the muscles fully. And, and I'll say... You know, there's rarely a class that goes by when I'm, when I'm doing the footwork, when my legs are up on the wall, if I'm doing this, there's rarely a class where I don't have some degree of cramping. And I've personally had them, I've had the, let's just call it the cramp from hell, the one in the calf. It gets me in the calf as a lot of people do. And man, it just doesn't seem to want to let go. And, and sometimes they're so strong that to, it's almost difficult to get out of it because it's a full-blown mm -hmm. spasm, right? Never have I had damage from one. The, the cramp from hell will be painful the next day, like, it's, like I just did 50 toe raises or heel raises, heel lifts. And, but the muscles sore, but then it's fine. We could surmise that we just have to go in to that unpleasant sensation to use the muscle fully, which is the only way it's, it's ever going to really unwind. And I had to work through, I mean, I was a pretty serious cyclist for many years. 
And so I feel like in a lot of ways, I'm, I'm still kind of catching up from all those years of, of using the muscles like that. So let's go back to the cramping in the feet or even the calf. If we go into the cramp, the muscle spasm, let's just call a cramp as a severe muscle spasm. We go into it and, and it, it gets used. I think of it as kind of juicing it up and using it fully. We're also going into the fear. We're not reacting. We're not being afraid of it. And so we, the more we do that, the more we unwind the thought the fearful thought and the triggering thought that comes with it, that plays an important role in unwinding those muscles. And more and more, at least it's what I'm experiencing with my body. My body is, I just feel like I was given the, in a way, the perfect body for this practice because I'm not inherently flexible. I'm not super duper stiff, but I'm on the stiffer end of the spectrum. And so I mean, even to just sit here like this for this period of time wouldn't have been possible for me in my 20s. And so, and, and it's not stretching my muscles that got me here. It's compression in the, in the joints and the bones and, and learning how to really use the muscles fully that got me here. And it's, the, it's what brings so many of the good results that people seem to get from this practice. But then after the cramp happens, then, okay, yeah, we come out of it. We come out of it slowly. And then, yes, it feels good to express it fully in the other direction and get the muscle to extend and to go into its full potential the other direction. That's different than leveraging on it to get it to actually stretch. It's the risk that happens with, with too much of contemporary yoga is we end up actually stretching the muscle and when they literally stretch then they scar and they heal longer and once you've actually lengthened a muscle it's very hard to get it to go back to its original functionality the way we practice and the way we kind of go into that stretchy sensation here there's no risk of that i've answered that question a lot and every time it comes out a little bit different but did that help yeah thank you so just uh don't try to be in it, the cramp as, as much as possible. Like, I feel like I definitely have to just work it. I can't, <laughs> I have to come out a little bit, but just try to, like you oh, said. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's not no pain, no gain. And it's not, yeah. we certainly don't want to, and we don't need to be aggressive with cramps. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would be in a way asking for trouble. So that's why I call it the cramp dance. So if this is the sole of your foot and you're starting to curl your toes and then, and even, you know, you this is where you tend to get them. And so you start to anticipate them a little bit. You do the cramp dance. You go slow up. Oh, there it is. I'm just going to stop. I'm not going to mm-hmm. go any further up. Oh, do I need to back off a little bit? You know, it's great yoga to just dance with it. This is one part of the practice that I think is very safe to take with you when you're enjoying a movie or riding as a passenger in the car or something, you know, you could, you could, fully flex your fingers and thumbs, but you can also just play with fully flexing your toes and, and the muscles in your feet. You know, you just do it. All you're doing is using them fully, nothing too special. And that just kind of becomes, a, it just unwinds things over time. It keeps us young in our bodies. Yeah, thank you. Yes, it does help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also don't think of it as exercise. That's what I like. You know, I, it's fun to just use them fully and, and not get into a whole bunch of repetition and, and where we tend to develop an agenda and try to put an imprint on the body or try to, uh, you know, it can start to get manipulative. And, and I think there's risk with that. So that... How's that sitting with you? Anything else you want to add, Joan? You, uh, you always have nice things nope. to say. Um, yeah, I was really just kind of, I wanted to hop in on, on Lex's uh, question. She told me she was going to hop on today. And then I, I did want to mm-hmm. share, um, I was in New York uh, last week and uh, we did a ton of walking, probably seven, eight miles a day. And normally that would just debilitate me uh, because I've got, I've always had some issues with my feet and um, just 
every night I would, we would come back after being out all day, my feet would be just crushed. And I put my legs up the wall. I do a mm -hmm. couple stretches and the next day I was great. And it was yeah. three, four days of that and absolutely fine. So, and my hip was good. And so it gets me a little emotional because, um, it's been something I've struggled with and uh, it's, it's yeah. just been so freeing to not have that. Oh shit. I'm, I'm going to have to, you know, wear my bunny slippers tomorrow. I can't I'm not gonna be able to do this or that. And so it's just been great. So cool. And it doesn't yeah, take much. Cool. I mean, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. You're in it. Yeah. The yoga is yeah. in your body. So yeah. you can go out and you can do those marathon walks, mm -hmm. come back, do a couple Sukhasanas, legs up on the wall, maybe yep. a little bit of strap work, 20 minutes. You know, go out to dinner, go to bed, wake up the next day and do it Good. all over again. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Just to share that, it's just been wonderful. Yeah. Sweet. Less becomes more for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining in. That was a lot of fun. And thank uh, you, Jeff. we'll see you next time. You, Email within your questions and um Let's see you on the mat. All right. See you Friday. <laughs> right. I'll yep. see you in Annapolis. All right. Yay. Namaste. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Namaste. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Jeff. Bye. Hello again. If you enjoyed today's chat, please share it with friends and family and subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you have a question for Jeff and the Avita community or know someone who does, why not join a live chat? They are on the first Wednesday of the month at 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. You'll find the link in the episode notes. Thanks for listening.